Hello everybody, welcome back. This video I'm going to be covering some decision making questions live on my computer that you can work through with me and you can watch me answer them. So I've got a mixture of these questions from online resources like Medify and I've got some of these questions from the tutoring sessions that I'm also doing over on my Discord channel. So if you have not joined that yet, please feel free to. It's in the about section of my channel and I can chat to some of you there if you have any more specific questions about yourself, okay? So I'm going to move over to the computer now. There we go, so that's us recording. Due to unforeseen circumstances, there is a watermark at the bottom of this. Actually, it's not unforeseen, it's foreseen because there's absolutely no chance I'm paying monthly to get rid of that watermark. Sorry, you're just going to have to deal with it. It's annoying me too. So the first question is from the mentoring session I did yesterday. Um, the mentoring session essentially included some sort of general UCAT questions about different sections and some specific harder questions um, that we worked through together. First question is John flips a coin every day for 200 days on any given day using probability estimate the number of days John will have where he flips exactly three times in a day so essentially what it's asking is what is the probability in days on how many times this guy's going to flip heads or tails three times in a day so the way I work through this um, is essentially we, we've got heads and we've got tails we both, obviously, because there's two sides of a coin, we have 50% for both. Oh my God, what is that? And we have 200 days. So essentially, this is the values we've got here, 50% and 50% probability, obviously, for heads and tails, and we've got 200 days. So the answer value is in days, and these are the notes that I exactly took on the, on the sort of mentoring call. So tails, one chance in a row, we have a 50% chance. Therefore, we've got 200, which is the original value of days, times a 50% chance is 100 days. For the second day in a row, we've got a 50% chance, 50 chance from the previous day, which therefore would be 100 days from the previous day times 50%, and that gives us 50 days. Three days in a row, we have a 50% chance from the previous day again, same calculation, the exact same time again, and that gives us 25 days. So, when I first saw this question, I almost hit me like a train I was like I have no idea how to do this but when you think about the probability questions sort of thoroughly and you think about them logically I think logically is probably the main thing um, it does become a lot easier so another thing is the answer here actually says it's A um, as you can see if you can see the mouse I don't know if you can or you can't um, under the explanation section it says correct answer is A and A is 12 it's not 12 I think this is um, maybe a wrong answer from the mock but it is 25 so essentially the main thing you have to remember here is since it's in a row i've got the notes here you can use the 50 percent chances of 0.5 probability which is the same calculation it's important to remember to remember that the 50 percent chance from the previous day as it states it's in a row so we're not doing um 50 percent of 200 three times you're doing it over the previous day and sort of carrying on the sum if that makes sense so the next question you can get in decision making, which is pretty common, is um, the sort of overlapping questions like this. So the main thing we've got here is the star is anime. You can see it in the big diagram overlapping here. Circle is K-drama. Rectangle is K-pop. And the triangle is C-drama. So the question that I just wrote myself is, for example, something like this. They all tend to have the same premise all decision making questions like this you're basically looking for either what is overlapping or what is not overlapping so say for example we're going to do the star in green so the star in green here is the one that we're not going to be focusing on okay as the question says how many people enjoy watching pop and drama so that's giving us the these three but not anime so this one is the one that we're not going to be looking at for overlapping okay so then, blue circle, we're looking at what's overlapping here. I've got the, I'll do orange for the rectangle. And then all we're basically looking for is really self-explanatory for this, is the things that overlap, um, that overlap with each other. So then for the triangle for C drama, that's going to be this here. Then what we're doing now is, um, obviously you don't have the, the access to write this sort of, uh, the different colours down in the exam. So all you're really going to do here is imagine this out in the exam and you're going to then find the section that overlaps with three of these, um, the, the drama and the pop, the C drama and the K pop and the K drama. And we're going to look at what doesn't overlap with the anime. So essentially get rid of a star in your head 
and then we're looking for all three things that overlap, which I would say is this section here, um, if I'm not corrected, because then we've got the 12 here, but this also overlaps with the triangle, which we don't want. Um, so I would say six is the answer here. So the next, um, the next question, somebody was mentioning on the Discord call yesterday that they were having some trouble doing the best argument questions. Um, and I think if you do practice the best argument questions quite a bit, you can go on Medify specifically and click on strongest argument. You will actually get quite good at these and the premise of it is so easy. Um, I, I took, when it got to the exam stage for me, I found that the, the strongest argument questions were the ones that I would look forward to in the exam actually, just because I thought they were a little bit easier. So, to improve road safety and encourage technological development, should the use of driverless cars and lorries be encouraged on all roads around the world? So. What I'll do again here, you won't have this in the exam, but um, I've got a pen here just I'll use for video's sake. So to improve road safety and encourage technological development, so these are two key words already that stick out to me, should the use of driverless cars and lorries, this is the next key point, be encouraged on all roads around the world. So essentially the three key words here are road safety, um, improving road safety, actually I'll, I'll expand that a wee bit. Um, by encouraging technological development and then the sort of vehicle to do this is driverless cars and lorries. So then I'd look at the arguments here and the main thing with decision making strongest argument questions is you definitely want to be looking for the point that brings up all of the keywords. So in here we've got three, so I want to be looking for an answer that has all three of these keywords. It tends um, don't go by this hard and fast because you probably will get it wrong eventually but I found going through study that it tended to be the longest answer just because obviously if there's a lot of points in the statement like there's three here you're not going to be able to include three keywords in like a tiny wee paragraph right at the start so A I would almost discount straight away yes it will be a pow powerful incentive for highway authorities to improve the standards of the road there's absolutely no mention of highway authorities in this up here um, improving standards of the road. Um, it's talking about road safety, so it's not the same again. So I would totally discount A. B, yes, with all their sensors. Again, it doesn't really mention sensors in the um, the original thing. So to be honest, I would be wary about this already. Driverless vehicles, yes, that is mentioned again, so that's good. Are likely to be much safer than vehicles driven by some drivers who may be tired, distracted, or unwell. So straight away, um, that is just totally discounted it for me doesn't mention anything about driver fatigue, about drivers being tired on the road. So totally that's discounted it. B is not it for me. No driverless cars should not be allowed on any roads until other drivers and passengers in their vehicles have total confidence in the system under development. So we'll underline the things because this is a, it's a fairly compelling answer. Um, driverless cars, yes, should not be allowed on any roads until other drivers, again, there's not really any mention of other drivers actually there's not any mention of other drivers in the main thing and passengers um, and it's got nothing to do with their confidence in the systems under development the the current the technological development is kind of there with this bit here um but again nah it's not c and then through process of elimination i would then assume that d is going to be the answer so no a pilot project on selected roads is needed first to be sure that driverless cars are are safe so it's talking about road safety, we've got road safety, we've got driverless cars, we've got driverless cars. As supporters claim that the technology, the technology that we have here, works in all circumstances. So then I would say B, um, it's not asking for an absolutely perfect argument, but it's asking for which one satisfies the statement the best. So therefore I would say it's D. So the key words, as I mentioned, road safety, technological development and driverless cars and um, we've got all three of this in the starting paragraph and then in option D we've got all three of these being satisfied just as I've said here so I would say that D is the strongest argument and um, as you get better with these throughout study and as you do sort of learn them like the back of your hand you will be able to do these pretty quickly and um, it for me in the exam it was a case of just scanning finding keywords and then finding the keywords in the argument and um, it just does it is as simple as that so last but not least um, I've got a syllogism. I hated these, I'm not going to lie. So I'll work this through um, exactly how I would have in the exam. So not all diagrams are mathematical proofs. If a mathematical, if a mathematical proof employs colours, then it must be a diagram. Okay, so straight away, um, I'll do it. I'll do it in terms of Venn diagrams at the start. So we've got this first one here. 
diagrams. So we've got not all diagrams are mathematical proofs. Okay, so not all essentially just means less than 100%. For that, just to signify that on a graph, I'll do just a regular Venn diagram. It doesn't need to be exact in your notes. Um, if it says most, I mean, you could spend the time doing a sort of Venn diagram like that, where you're getting almost more than half of the circle, but to be honest, it doesn't really matter. Um, you just need to be aware of the concepts of sum, which mean, again, the same as not all. Uh, they mean between sort of like 1% and 99%. Um, none mean obviously the two Venn diagrams are like this. They're not, um, nothing, there's no correlation here. Whereas anything like some, not all, um, most, anything like that that assumes that there's some overlap, I would draw it like this in a Venn diagram. So not all diagrams, so here we've got diagrams, are mathematical proofs. So we've got not all diagrams are mathematical proofs here. If a mathematical proof employs colours, then it must be a diagram. Okay, this is really easy actually. So if, math if a mathematical proof in employs colours, then it must be a diagram. So the middle section here then assumes that this is the mathematical proofs that employ colours, therefore are diagrams, which is perfectly um, perfectly given in this Venn diagram. So place yes if the conclusion does, place no if it doesn't. Mathematical proofs that do not employ colours, this is talking about now this part of the diagram here, are not diagrams. So that's right, as we can see in the diagram, this doesn't overlap. Mathematical proofs that do not employ colours is this part here. So it does not employ colours. That would mean it's not a diagram. So yes, mathematical proof. A mathematical proof is either a diagram or it does not employ colours. So again, we're looking at this bit here. A mathematical proof is either a diagram or it does not employ colours. Again, I would say this is true. That's a Y, by the way, not a cross. Um, I'm writing on a mouse, so it's going to be pretty poor. All diagrams employ colours. No, we don't have enough information. We know that some, the, the bit in yellow that I've coloured in, we know that some employ colours, which then means that they're mathematical proofs. But we also don't have any information about this main part here. So it is important in syllogisms. If you're not given enough information, do not assume anything. Um, assuming anything will pretty much... Um, on the large mean you're going to get the question wrong. If you're assuming stuff that's not there, you're probably going to get it wrong. So all diagrams employ colours. No, because we can't assume that. We're not given enough information. Some diagrams are mathematical proofs. Yes. So uh, it sort of links back to the thing I was saying earlier. So words like not all, most, some, um, most of these essentially mean the same thing in decision making as in some is less than 100%. So not all is also less than 100% if that makes sense. So I would say some diagrams are mathematical proofs. Correct, because this overlaps here. A diagram that employs colours is a mathematical proof. A diagram, so we're looking at the left-hand side now, that employs colours is a mathematical proof, yes. Nope, and this is where decision-making gets difficult. So it's telling us that a diagram that employs colours is a mathematical proof. We don't know this. We are only told that a mathematical proof that employs colours is a diagram. This is where decision making gets really difficult and you can't sort of apply the inverse of a rule to diagram, if you know what I mean. So I actually would say that this is false, but I'm being no, very no, wide no, and I no. think that I'm right, so yeah. So uh, as far as syllogisms go, this is pretty easy. Um, I think if you're able to do it in a diagram, then it's pretty easy. So that is the questions done um, for now. I think decision making is one of these things where you have a lot of time to do it and it is quite easy to run overboard time wise um, and sort of think that you have loads of time. But it is important that syllogisms can take a lot of time sometimes. So make sure you're getting really on top of questions like the, 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 the overlapping one about anime, K-pop and all that and strongest argument questions. You want to be able to do these pretty quickly. Um, Another thing we were talking about in the mentor call yesterday is if you find specific questions really, really difficult, for example, um, there was, for me anyway, like a lot of difficulty with a lot of probability questions. If you find uh, if you find probability questions absolutely excruciating and you, they're quite difficult to understand, which was me, just discount them. Just don't even take them on in the exam. First of all, the chances of you actually getting a probability in the exam, you could get one, you could get two. Um, you could get none. So there is a chance of you getting nothing. If you don't learn them at all, you're going to have two guaranteed losses, one guaranteed loss. 
um, that's if you discount them. If you if you sort of half half in half out, try to answer some probability questions or whatever it would be for yourself that you find really difficult. You would potentially spend two minutes in the exam trying to answer this question and get it totally wrong because you struggle with it. Um, if you know what I'm saying, basically you can discount questions that you find really difficult. It will save you time and it will let you get proper, solid answers for all the other questions and syllogisms and easier questions like argument questions. If you haven't yet, um, I hope you found value in this and please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be taking people through the entire medical process in terms of personal statement, references, interviews, blah 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 blah, the whole process. I'm going to try and make it a little bit easier to understand on a sort of general, um, regular, conversational basis. I'm really desperately trying to make the medicine application process a little bit easier and I'm doing this through, as far as I'm aware anyway, trying to make things easy to understand through valuable videos on YouTube that everyone can understand. I hope this has been understandable and I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, again, like it, comment it, do all that stuff because I read them all, I reply to them all and I like hearing from everybody. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.